So look, Filecoin is a decentralized storage solution with contract-based data persistence. It was built by Protocol Labs and now additionally recently launched smart contract support. But before we get into all of that, it's estimated that as of right now, the internet has 5 million terabytes of data. And Ethereum full note for comparison is around one terabytes big. So if we wanna to move to a decentralized internet, we just need to move 5 million terabytes into Ethereum, right? Now, not only would this be incredibly expensive for a traditional blockchain, but decentrality would be threatened and old data becomes baggage, aka state bloat. When a traditional blockchain gets more data, every other node needs to add every single piece of data. So if a blockchain grows too big too fast, it can be difficult for other node operators to keep up with the expansion of size and they just drop off. This means, of course, fewer and fewer nodes secure the network, meaning it becomes more centralized. And if I keep every piece of data that keeps getting deployed, in 50 years, you'll have a blockchain where maybe only 5% of the chain is actually used and the rest is just historical garbage baggage. We're gonna have to use a different model than a traditional layer one blockchain that we're currently used to. Now that we have a little bit of the backstory, now we can start talking Filecoin. Filecoin is one of these decentralized storage solutions, and they did take a different approach than a traditional blockchain. Instead of storing every single piece of data on chain, it has a chain, but that chain only stores agreements or deals between storage providers and renters. Renters pay storage providers in Filecoin, and the storage providers stores data. Yes, you heard that right. The Filecoin blockchain is more of a two-sided marketplace than a single monolithic blockchain, like Ethereum, Polygon, or Solana. This avoids the threatening of decentrality because the chain only stores deal information and it's easy for anyone to join the network and rent out a piece of storage. And it avoids the issue of state float because each deal slash piece of data has an expiration. So you avoid the problem of having to store this data forever, which intuitively makes sense to me. You wouldn't tell your friend, hey, pay me one time and I'll let you sleep on my couch forever. Speaking of which, Joe, due to my analysis on the Filecoin blockchain, I have been enlightened and that you should indeed leave. Now, the obvious question then is, is once a deal has been made, how do we guarantee that that data is gonna be stored forever? How do we guarantee the storage provider isn't just gonna drop the data? The solution to this is proof of replication and proof of space time which are Filecoin consensus algorithms. And for those familiar with the blockchain ecosystem, it's really just proof of stake with cryptographic challenges to the storage providers. The storage provider puts down some Filecoin as a stake, and if they don't provide data that they promise they're providing, they get slashed. The Filecoin network issues challenges to them to make sure that they're still storing the data. Oh, and just as a side note, VCs, when you're looking at blockchains, look at something like this. This is a chain where the token does matter. This is known as contract-based data persistence for decentralized storage solutions. Since the data persists due to some agreement that they made, and if they don't keep their promise, they get slashed. The storage providers are paid Filecoin for storing the data. Data isn't encrypted, so it's not good for storing private data. There are minimum size requirements. You can't just store a single byte file. And anytime you want to retrieve data, you also have to pay Filecoin to get the data out of the storage provider. Now, this is Filecoin in a nutshell up to about three months ago. Very recently, they launched the ability to also deploy smart contracts on the Filecoin chain in the Filecoin virtual machine. And because every blockchain dev in the world knows the EVM, they launched on top of their FVM, the FEVM, which allows you to do all your Ethereum stuff on Filecoin. So now Filecoin is L1 that has this ability to store tons of data and scale very well and also do smart contracts. So the question is, okay, does this mean that in a smart contract in Solidity, can I have them store a ton of data? Well, no, not yet. Well, this means my Solidity, I'll be able to have access to tons of data, right? Uh, well, well, no, not yet either. So a lot of the FVM and smart contract integrations don't quite exist yet. Since the data is actually stored off chain with the storage providers, your Solidity and your smart contract code won't be able to access it. However, you can access whether or not a deal is being fulfilled, the status of a deal, and if a storage provider is actually storing your data, which to be fair is still really cool because you have a platform that can do all the smart contract functionality of an EVM chain and then also store tons of data, which is still sort of blowing my mind and making me rethink where I want to deploy my next application. You can follow the Filecoin docs under the smart contract section to deploy a smart contract to the Filecoin network, and it's the exact same as you would as any other EVM chain. All right, so you're with me so far, right? Quick recap. Filecoin is a decentralized storage solution. It uses a two-sided marketplace with incentive models to make sure data is stored. This model allows it to scale to potentially limitless amounts of data, and you can launch smart contracts on it as well. Now, the Filecoin network really embraces decentrality, and they have an ecosystem of a ton of projects that can actually be a little bit confusing. 
So I'm here to give you the cheat sheet. What's the deal with IPFS? And what is Ceramic, Estuary, Saturn, and all this other stuff? So IPFS is one of my favorite protocols, and it's also built by Protocol Labs. If you're unfamiliar with IPFS, check out the link in the description to learn more. But you might have seen a lot of headlines like this. Foghorn is the incentive layer for IPFS. However, this isn't exactly true. Storing data on Foghorn does not mean you store data on IPFS. Nothing. Nope. Like I said, if you want to retrieve data on Filecoin, you need to pay storage providers. On IPFS, you do not need to do such thing. IPFS does not have data persistence. There is no way to guarantee data stored on IPFS will stay there forever. Now, the story doesn't end there because there's a project called Estuary, which is working on exactly this. You store your data on Filecoin and you also get it stored on IPFS. But just the raw Filecoin protocol, just to get this out of the way, it does not store your data on IPFS. That's an extra step that a lot of these additional protocols can do for you. Glyph is the alchemy slash Inferio Filecoin. Saturn is, if you think of Filecoin as cold storage, Saturn is hot storage for data. A Lotus node is gonna be the Go implementation of a Filecoin node, similar to how Geth is the Go implementation of Ethereum. But now that you know kind of the basics of Filecoin, what it's about, what it does, what does it actually feel like to use? If you wanna do the smart contract stuff, it's the exact same as any other EVM chain, but for storing and retrieving data, the process is a little different. First off, you'll need to run a node. And you'll see a lot of different choices like full node, light node, archive node, storage provider. Let's just pretend all you wanna do is store and retrieve data on the network. You don't wanna actually wanna be a storage provider. If you wanna be a storage provider, you need a very jacked up, beefy machine to do that. And if you wanna be an archive node, you also need a more jacked, more beefy machine. And to run a light node, you still need a full node. So we're just gonna start with a full node. Full node is gonna need at least 32 gigabytes of RAM and enough SSD to cover the full node. I found in practice that six terabytes is pretty good since the chain actually grows 40 gigabytes every single day. You periodically prune it and trim it, but if you have six terabytes of storage, the pruning won't be so bad. Then you'll go run through the docs, install the Lotus node, and you'll start with the Lotus command. After you've got it all installed, you'll be able to see the Lotus output by typing the Lotus command. You wanna go ahead and follow the docs to go ahead and start syncing your Lotus node. I'm not gonna show that here though. Once it's syncing, you can run Lotus, sync, wait, see where you are in your syncing process. It'll take a few days for it to get all synced up. But once it is synced to look, you can run, run Lotus, client, import, and then your data. I've actually found using a car file or an import from IPFS is usually the easiest. Now, when we want to save our high.txt file, we can use the built-in Lotus Marketplace, but most people just go straight to a storage provider registry and just make a deal directly with a storage provider. One of the recommended places to do this is at the Filecoin Plus website, where we can go ahead and find a storage provider. Once we get the provider ID of a storage provider that we're interested in, we can come back to our terminal and run Lotus Client Deal which will normally open us up into the interactive deal assistant, but I don't have a private key with any money on it, so you'll need to fund your node as well. But normally then you can just step through and pick parameters like how long you want it for, the miner, which we got the ID from the registry, how much you're willing to pay, etc. Once your deal is in flight, you'll have to wait a couple of days for the deal to actually secure and what's called seal. You can check your deal statuses by running this command. And then after a little bit, we'll see your deal pop up. So now you know a lot more about Filecoin. I hope I cleared up some confusion for you. Really excited for what people build on this chain. I'm expecting in the future, we'll have our front ends, we'll have our back ends, we'll have a chain link network connecting those back ends to a decentralized storage solution like Filecoin. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.